This is track 18, Give Me Back My Mother Reprise. And I think this is the second time that that's come up. So a little confusing with the track naming, but obviously stuff's about to go down. So we'll see what this song reveals. What? No! No! No, 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 I can't, no, 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 you did not pull that, just no, no, I knew it, I told you guys, I knew it, they were gonna pull this shit and have Ursa Speed, the leader of the Comprachicos, or the guy who just figured Gwynplaine, either way, just no. No, 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 no. I am done. I am done with this. Just no. Just why did you do that? Oh shit! Oh! Oh shit! Shit, shit, shit! I have no idea what just happened. Okay, Gwynplaine remembered and did he kill Ursus? Did he kill Bark the Federal? What, what, what is going on? I, I don't know. Hopefully the next song will tell us. Track 19 is called The Smile in Your Face slash Beauty and the Beast slash A New Royal Motto. Oh damn.
Seasons of love. Homo! I'm not going to Mojo. Let me get this straight. So, Dea is Ursus's biological daughter, and his wife was Dea's mom who froze in the snow, okay. But, like, where does Gwynplaine come into all of this? Like, was he still the son of an aristocrat? Was he, were, obviously his parents were killed, and it seems to imply that when he saw the, the hanging man, he was actually looking at the corpse of his dad, which, okay. Yeah, interesting, interesting take. Um, a little confusing, again, since we're just going off of audio. It's hard to tell what exactly is being, like, what's going on. But I don't know. I just, I've never really liked stories that make family trees that weren't originally there in the original book. I mean, why can't Gwen Plan and Dare just be the two random kids that Ursus happened to find and they made a little family unit? That to me seems more more of a strong bond than, oh, it turns out they were actually were related somehow, or Ursus was related to one of them. But that's just my personal take on it. Really intense song, and we're getting towards the end. It sounds like they're going to make Gwynplaine and Dea survive in the end, which in the book, if you know anything about Victor Hugo, he loves to kill off his characters like at the very end of stories. And yeah, Gwynplaine and Dea, they don't really have a happy ending in the book. But we'll see where this goes, and it sounds like, of course, they give it the, the Disney-fied version of, we learned our lesson from the disfigured guy, and we're going to be happy and jump light years ahead of the social norms and bring 21st century ideas to the 18th century, which, eh. I mean, the strength of Victor Hugo's stories are showing hope for the future, but also making you depressed as hell at the same time. Because every single book of his boils down to someday there's going to be a great golden age of an egalitarian society where everything's happy and everything is as it should be. And divinity and nature and humanity all live as one, as pagan philosophies dictate. But not right now, because right now humanity sucks and we have a long way to go. So that's the strength of his story. So bringing in the whole, we're going to Disneyfy the end of the story and make it happy and bring 21st century ideas to 1705 England. It just doesn't, it cheapens the story and it doesn't make sense, but whatever. You know, I could see them. I'm not surprised that that's where they went. And this is track number 20. It is the finale and it is called Stars in the Sky. Are they gonna kill Ursus? Oh, come on! Oh, you've gotta be kidding me! Oh, 
Oh, this is way too Disney. Okay, that was way, 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 way too Disney. And don't get me wrong, I love Disney. I was a child of the 90s, so the Disney Renaissance and the musicals they put out, yeah, those are my jams, and I still love them to this day. And I love what Disney did with The Hunchback of Notre Dame, even if they tweaked it to give it a happy ending. But this, no, this, a happy ending with this just wouldn't work. It, it cheapens the story, and having Ursus die or go to jail or whatever happened to him at the end just... No, it's backwards to what happened in the book. And in the book, Gwynplaine and Dea are the ones who die and Ursus is left alone as this old man with Homo and he goes off to, sails off to Holland. We don't know what happens to him. We don't know what happens to this frail old man who has lost everything. He's lost his children. He's sent forth to this foreign land. We don't know what happened to him. And Gwynplaine and Dea, they do get their happy ending because they shuffle off their mortal coils and they they return to the cauldron of of the goddess and there their souls can rest and just be happy. Don't get me wrong, would I love to see them have a happy life on earth? Absolutely. I ship Gwynplaine and Dea like you would not believe. I adore them. They are my favorite couple in literature. I would love it if they just got a little farmhouse together if they could just put aside the performing and just live in some quiet little forest with and have kids of their own and just have a happy little family I would love that but that wasn't in the cards for them and honestly I think the tragic ending is a more fitting more powerful ending that was the soundtrack of the grinning man and I liked parts of it I loved a lot of the music I loved that they adapted the story pretty pretty decently better than the 2012 film and they kept a lot of elements from the 1928 film which is great because that is an absolute masterpiece and if you haven't seen it you should watch it it's available on youtube they kept a lot of elements of the book even if they tweaked a lot of things that i didn't like i didn't like them making josiana and david actual siblings. I didn't like that they made Gwynplaine and Day's relationship so too sugary sweet, too Disney, too platonic, but it seems to imply they're gonna go off and get married at the end and so develop a more mature relationship so that's a good thing. Um, yeah overall if I had to rate this I would give it um, a 7 out of 10. So pretty, pretty strong adaptation. Not necessarily how I would have done it, but obviously that's the case because I didn't write this. Um, but pretty good, pretty good. I enjoyed it and strong adaptation, good music, good lyrics, even if some of them were hard to hear sometimes. The characters seemed strong for what they did, including the changes that they made to them. For the changes that they made, they within those changes they wrote the characters well. Some of the metaphors and things were a bit too on the nose. Some of the changes I didn't necessarily like, but well, you saw my reaction as this unfolded. So overall, 7 out of 10, I enjoyed this very much. It's a decent adaptation, but of course I would recommend the book. And if you would like my other thoughts on, if you'd like me to share how I adapted the story, I'd be happy to do a video on that. I had a staged reading of my play version that was done about a year ago this April. I would be happy to share my thoughts on it, my thoughts on my script, and if anyone's out there who would like to read my script and do a review on it and we could talk about it, I would love to because I loved sharing my review of this version and I just love talking about The Man Who Laughs in any capacity. So. If anyone's out there, if you'd love to do a collaboration, I would be more than happy to. And this was a wonderful musical version. Playlist can be found on YouTube. I will leave a link to it in the description below. 
and feel free to follow me on all my socials which will also be linked below thank you for watching and if you have seen the grinning man or listened to it what are your thoughts on it i would love to discuss them in the comments below and thank you for watching and blessed be